Hello everyone. It's an honor to be here and present our work. I am Mushfiqul Anwar Shiraji, a PhD candidate at Monash University, Malaysia. I wanted to join this meeting in person, but couldn't join due to visa issues. A very special thanks to the committee for giving me this opportunity to join virtually. On behalf of the team, today I am going to discuss the development and validation process of a new self-report instrument named LEBA, which stands for Light Exposure Behavior Assessment. Rafael Lajar and I worked together in this project under the supervision of Dr. Manuel Spischan. This instrument has been developed by the common effort of an international panel, and I am truly happy to be a part of this effort. The audience of this meeting already know light helps us to see and perceive our environment. Light stimuli absorbed by the photoreceptors are sent to different hotspots of our brain, which are responsible to regulate certain physiological and psychological aspects, including melatonin suppression, circadian pace shifting, modulation of alertness, and other higher cognitive functions. By extension, light influence our sleep and cognition, and also when and how much light we get has huge implication for health and performance. By right, it is important to measure the light we are exposed to. So far, we have different objective light dosimeter to measure the light exposure, but these tools are not readily available due to lack of resources, they are very expensive. And again, eye level measurements sometimes appear intrusive. And also the measurement we get are not scalable. Additionally, measuring light intensity using subjective method is very difficult. It is hard to estimate the photopic lux and sometimes laymen may find it bizarre when we ask them about different light properties. As such, we try to introduce a new line of thought Instead of measuring light intensity subjectively, we tried to capture different light exposure related behavior. Our behavior is a significant agency that guide our light exposure. People may find it easy to appraise and recall their own behavior instead of light intensity. Here is a list of questionnaires that have some questions related to light exposure and things closely related to that. This is not an exhaustive list of all questionnaires out there, but a few major ones that we have encountered. None of them measure light exposure related behavior to a full extent. Because of this paucity in the literature, we decided to create our own scale, LEBA. In a joint effort, our international panel of contributors created 48 items related to different light exposure behaviors that we deemed important and informative for health and performance. We decided to make assessment retrospective with regards to the past four weeks and let people rate their behaviors. Here you can see some of the items we have generated. We launched an online cross-sectional survey to collect responses. Participants were recruited via the website of a comic correlated with the survey. We also shared the link via social media like LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. And we also used mailing list, word of mouth, and our own personal contacts. Last but not least, we are supported by distribution of the survey link by Michael Harf via f.lux software. Our survey was fully anonymous and hosted on RedCap. It took 15 to 20 minutes to complete the survey and participation was not compensated. We have five attentional check items. You can see one of the examples here. Only complete data sets with no missing values and passing all attentional check items were analyzed. We have participants from all continent but Antarctica. At first, we collected data from 428 participants and conducted the exploratory factor analysis. And then we collected more data and conducted the confirmatory factor analysis from additional 262 participants. This makes an overall data set of 690 participants. As a reminder, these are only complete data sets with no missing value and had correct attentional check item responses. Regarding age and gender, there was no significant difference between the CFA and EFA sample. Around 7% also reported a gender variant identity and overall 46% were native English speakers reflecting the high participation rates in USA, Canada, UK, and Australia. 
To identify the optimal number of factors, we employed scree plot and Hall method. Scree plot suggested six factors and Hall method suggested five factors. As such, we tested both the models. To test both of these in our exploratory factor analysis, we used principal axis factor extraction method with Verimax rotation, and we followed the common guidelines where each factor should have at least three items, items with a factor loading lower than 0.3 were discarded, and items with cross loading greater than 0.3 across factors are discarded. Following these guidelines, we rejected the six factor model as one factor emerged with only two items, and we accepted the five factor model with 25 items. Here you can see the five factors. Items under the first factor investigate the preference of using light filters. The next factor investigates how much time an individual spent in outdoors. The third factor investigates our habit of using smartphone and smartwatch before sleeping time. The fourth factor investigates how much light we are getting in the morning and daytime. And the last one investigates how much light we are getting before our bedtime. We then validate this structure using confirmatory factor analysis on a separate sample of 262 participants. In the CFA, we used robust weighted least square estimator. Here you can see the guidelines that we followed to assess the model fit. We fitted two models, one with 25 items, another with 23 items. Our five-factor model with 23 items attained best fit in, in terms of the fit indexes, and it also showed satisfactory reliability. On the same sample, we conducted a measurement invariance between native and non-native English speakers. Measurement invariance indicates whether a construct holds similar meaning across different groups. At first, we checked whether the factor structure is same across the two groups. Next, we assessed whether the factor loadings are equal to the two groups. There is another step where we assessed whether the intercepts are equal. To increase the simplicity of this slide, we have not shown it here. Lastly, we checked whether the error variance are equal between the groups. Our model holds true for all four measurement invariance instances, indicating the highest level of invariance. Lastly, in the overall sample of 690 participants, we conducted a item response theory-based item analysis using graded response model to make a short labor. We treated each factor as unidimensional and tried to identify which items are carrying low information across the latent continuum. Here you can see we have identified five items with low information and discarded them. This is the test information plot of the five factors. On the x-axis, we have plotted the latent traits of the participants. And on y-axis, we plotted the information that our test is carrying. Here we can see all the five factors are carrying sufficient information across the x-axis, enabling us to categorize the light exposure related behaviors. Now it comes to the application of LEVA. First, it is an open access tool that will help researcher to use it on a low budget research scenario. It can also be used in conjunction with objective measurement tool to gain more insight about light exposure and related activity. It can also help in counseling and clinical settings where we need to profile individuals to provide them a fitting light exposure diet. And lastly, it can be also used in large scale studies to understand the light exposure related behavior of a whole community. We are at the very end of our talk. Here we have discussed the development of a self-report instrument to capture light exposure related behavior, where we identified five major behavioral dimensions. We have psychometrically validated it, and the translation works in different language is going on. The instrument is available at the given link, and hopefully a preprint of the manuscript will be available in the July 2022. If you want to use our tool or if you have any question, please feel free to contact us. We will be happy to respond. Here are some references that we have used in our talk. Thank you for your time and patience.